Hello and welcome to Teacher Rohulas channel. In this video, I'm going to work on exercise 3.2 of Cambridge Primary Mathematics, Learner's Book 3. In the first question of this exercise, we are asked to use the three digits and make a two digit and a one digit and subtract the one digit from the two digit numbers. Now it is asking us to find the six possible answers as well. And we are asked to show our method of solving as well. So the first number that I can make is 46 minus 8. 46 minus 8. Now to subtract 8 from 46, we subtract 8 from the ones digit. In the ones digit, we don't have enough number. So we have to borrow from the tens digit. If you borrow one from the tens, it becomes 3. And the number in the ones digit becomes 16. Now 16 minus 8 equals 8. The 3 which is left in the tens place minus nothing is 3. So the difference between 46 and 8 is 38. The other possible numbers that we can make can be 68 minus 4. 68 minus 4 equals 64 because 8 minus 4 is 4 and 6 minus nothing is 6. Or we can make 64 minus 8. Again, we cannot subtract 8 from 4. We borrow from 6. 6 becomes 5 and 4 becomes 14. 14 minus 8 equals 6. And 5 minus nothing is 5. The answer is 56. These are the three possible answers. Let's find the other three ones. We can make 86 minus 4. 86 minus 4 equals 82. 82. The fifth number that we can make can be 84 minus 6. Again, 6 cannot be subtracted from 4. We borrow from 8. This becomes 7 and this becomes 14. 14 minus 6 is equal to 8 and 7 minus nothing is 7. So the answer is 78. The last number that we can make is 48 minus 6. 48 minus 6 equals 42 because 8 minus 6 is 2 and 4 minus nothing is 4. We are done with the first question. Let's scroll down to move to the second question. In question 2, we are given 4 digits. The digits are 3, 5, 7 and 9. And we are asked to make a 3 digit number and a 1 digit number and then subtract the one digit number from the three digit numbers. And we are asked to show our work as well. Besides, it's asking us to find at least six possible calculations. To do so, we first make 357 minus nine. This is the first number. We know that nine is in the ones place. Here also we have to subtract nine from the ones place. We don't have enough in the ones place, so we borrow from the tens place. 5 becomes 4 and 7 becomes 17. Now 17 minus 9 is equal to 8. 4 minus nothing is 4 and 3 minus nothing is also 3. So 357 minus 9 equals 348. This is the first answer. We can make other numbers also. We can make 579 minus 3. 579 minus 3 9 minus 3 is 6, 7 minus nothing is 7, and 5 minus nothing is also 5. So the answer is 576. Okay, the other three digit number that we can make is 793 minus 5. To subtract 5 from 793, we subtract it from the ones place. We don't have enough in the ones place, we borrow from the tens place. So 9 changes to 8, and 3 changes to 13. 13 minus 5 is equal to 8. And 8 minus nothing is 8. 7 minus nothing is also 7. So the answer is 788. Let's find the other three possible calculations. So we can make 935 minus 7. 935 minus 7, again we subtract, again we subtract 7 from 5, which is in the ones place, 5 is not enough, we borrow from the tens place, this becomes 2, and this becomes 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. 
2 minus nothing is 2 and 9 minus nothing is also 9. Okay, the fifth number that we can make is 537 minus 9. Again, we follow the same process. We borrow from 3, it becomes 2, it becomes 17. And 17 minus 9 equals 8. 2 minus nothing is 2 and 5 minus nothing is 5. 528 is the answer. The last possible answer, we, have, we can make many other numbers. We can make many other numbers because we are asked to find at least 6. So we will find 6 calculations. So the other calculation that I can write is 759 minus 3. 759 minus 3, 9 minus 3 is 6. 5 minus nothing is 5 and 7 minus nothing is also 7. So the answer is 756. These are the six possible calculations that we could find. We can even find more because the book asks us to make at least six. So we made six. Let's now move to question number three. Let me scroll it a bit down. In question number three, it says 178 cartons of milk are delivered to the store. 25 of them are damaged. How many cartons of milk can the store sell? We are asked to estimate, then calculate. When it says how many cartons of the milk can the store sell, it means we have to subtract. We have to subtract 25 from 178. So 178 minus 25. Because it's asking us to first estimate we will estimate using rounding we round both numbers to the nearest 10 178 rounds to 180 and 25 rounds to 30 the estimated number of cartons left is 150 because 80 minus 30 is 50 now we calculate the actual number 178 minus 25 so 8 minus 5 is 3, 7 minus 2 is 5, and 1 minus nothing is 1. So the answer is 153, which is very close to the estimated answer, which is 150. It means the store can sell 153 of the cartons. We are done with question number 3. Let's scroll down to move to question number 4. In question number 4, it says, 200 62 melons are delivered to the store, but 37 of them are damaged. How many melons can the store sell? Again, we have to find the difference. We have to subtract 37. We have to subtract 37 from 262. So 262 minus 37. But here it says estimate, then calculate. To estimate again, we use rounding. We round to the nearest 10 because this number is a two digit number. So 262 rounds to 260 because two in the ones place is four or less. And 37 rounds to 40 because seven, which is in the ones place is five or more. Now we find the difference between the rounded numbers. 260 minus 40 is 220. This is the estimated answer, which shows the store can sell 220 melons. Now let's find the actual answer, 262 minus 37. So we subtract from the ones place, 2 minus 7 cannot be subtracted because 2 is less than 7. We borrow from the tens place, 6 becomes 5 and this number becomes 12. 12 minus 7 is equal to 5. And 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 minus nothing is 2. This is the actual answer or the actual number of melons that the store can sell. It is almost the same as the estimated answer. We are done with question number 4 as well. Let's now scroll down to move to question number 5. In question number 5, it says, On Tuesday, a post office has 472 parcels for delivery. A van takes 267 of the parcels. How many parcels are still left in the post office? Here also we are asked to first estimate, then calculate. 
So we know that we have to subtract 267 from 472. Let's first estimate. So 472 and 267. Here also we use rounding to estimate. In these two numbers, because we have three digits, we round to the nearest hundreds. This number rounds to 500 because seven in the tens place is five or more. This one is five or more. And 267 rounds to 300. Rounds to 300. Now the difference between 500 and 300 is 200. Means about 200 parcels are left in the post office. To find the actual answer or to find the actual number of the parcels left in the post office, we subtract the numbers. So 472, here I will use column subtraction, minus 267. We cannot subtract 7 from 2, so we borrow from this 7, it becomes 6, and this becomes 12. 12 minus 7 is 5, and 6 minus 6 is 0. 4 minus 2 is 2. The actual number of parcels left in the post office is 205. 205, which is very close to the estimated answer. Let's now scroll down to move to question number 6. In question number 6, it says, On Friday, the post office has 683 parcels for delivery. A van takes 548. How many parcels are still left in the post office? Here also we are asked to estimate and then calculate. We know that we have to subtract 548 from 683 to find out how many parcels are left in the office. So we first estimate. Here also we round to the nearest 100. So 683 rounds to 700 because 8 in the tens place is 5 or more. And 548 rounds to 500 because 4 is 4 or less. Now we find the difference 700 minus 500 is 200. This is the estimated number of parcels left in the office. Let's now find the actual number. Here also I use column subtraction. So 683 minus 548. Again, 8 is more than 3. We cannot subtract. We borrow from the tens place, this becomes 7, and this becomes 13. 13 minus 8 is 5, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 6 minus 5 is 2. 235. Although it is a bit close to the estimated answer, but it is not that close to the estimated answer. If we had rounded to the nearest 10, maybe we would get a closer estimated answer. Anyways, we are done with all questions of exercise 3-2, which are on pages 42, 43, and 44 of the Learner's Book of Cambridge Primary Mathematics. I hope it helps you understand how to estimate and how to find the difference between two or more numbers. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like the videos, and share the videos with your friends. Have a nice time, and thank you so much.